Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and as you know, I love a good reusable project. Um, I haven't been able to ditch all my plastic, but I'm trying very hard to. And although there's probably a million tote bag projects out there on the internet, none of them are as beautiful as these little designs here. I especially like my pigeon tote. And I'm just going to show you how simple they are to make so that you can rustle yourself up a whole handbag full of them and they just fold up really neatly. You can pop them in your coat pocket and because they've got like a box bottom to them, you can get quite a lot of shopping in there. So you can make many any size you like. I've got some fabric here uh, and because when I do go shopping and I tend to buy heavy things, I've got a piece of printed cotton and it's backed with a piece of plain white cotton just so you've got a good lining and make them last very, you know, for a very long time. And my bag is 15 inches, which is, what's that in centimetres? Uh, 30, about 35, 36 by 24 inches, which is about 60 centimetres. But as I say, you can make them, well, cut your bag according to your cloth. This bag is gonna look like this once it's finished. But before we start with the bag, you need to make the straps. So, cut yourself a strip of fabric that is about four, uh, no, two inches, so that's five centimetres wide. Again, by about 24, so that's 60 centimetres. And then you just want to finger press in five mil or quarter of an inch on each long edge. And then find your reading glasses so you can see what you're doing. If you bring those folded edges to the middle, like this, Pop a pin in there. Let's just do all of this because otherwise it will go horribly, horribly wrong as I'm demonstrating to you. Ooh. You don't need many pins in it. If you've finger pressed it well, it will be fine. There you go. And then begin stitching and line up this right hand edge of your fabric to the inside of the left hand edge of your presser foot. So you've got an even seam all the way down. Remember to turn the machine on for a change. And when you're running a long seam like this, what you can take advantage of is the fact that your feed dogs will do the work for you. So as long as you're holding it straight, they will pull your fabric through straight. I'm not suggesting that you can do this without actually looking, but and I'm not going to try. You could probably actually do this with no hands, but again, I'm not going to try that either. So run that all the way down. When you get to the end, just run across the end. And then just run up the other folded side to give yourself a nice, regular strap. Oh, look, there you go, that was brave of me. <laughs> Resisting the urge to guide that fabric. But this is why, you know, modern sewing machines are fantastic, because the feed dogs do do a lot of the work for you. So you have one strap here, and you have one strap here. You put them to one side, and take your printed fabric, I won't screw that up because I need that in a minute, don't I? And fold it in half right sides together. And then what you're going to do is just run down that back seam. Like so.
Now you can have that as a side seam if you desire. I quite like having it as a central back seam. So what I'm just going to do is finger press this opposite side and then open it out and line up the seam that I've just done with a finger press line so that I know that seam will fall in the middle of the back of the bag. Get those two ends and then sew across the bottom of your bag so the fabric is this way up. Okay, so you've got your bag like so. And then to make the box bottoms, if you just, again, finger press these sides like this, put your hand inside the bag and manipulate it so that this bottom seam lines up with that seam that you've just finger pressed, like so. So it's a bit like an origami squash fold. You're taking it away from the fold that it had and you're squashing it down. Just pin it and do the same with the other one. Put your finger in to flatten it and then just manipulate the fabric so that that bottom seam is in line with your finger press line. And you don't even need, to, I mean you can draw a straight line if you prefer. I tend to just pop it in the machine, check that finger press line is parallel to my machine, find the finger catch for my bobbin plate as a guide and just sew straight across that squash fold. And cut the end off, bravely, because I've got no idea if I've actually done that right. Do the same with the other side. Again, same sort of distance. Make sure it's, that press line is parallel to the rest of your machine. fold and cut the end off. So now the moment of truth when you turn your bag the right way round you've got a nice box bottom or square bottom or feed sack bottom there's all sorts of names for this but essentially what it means is you've got quite a nice structure to your bag and then before we go any further you need to put your straps in place so if you've got a gridded cutting mat, these are invaluable. Um, line your centre crease line up with a centre line on the um, mat. And let's put the straps at two inches either side of the middle. Just pin it there. Make sure your strap isn't twisted and then bring that end down and pin it here. Flip it over and do the same with the other strap. Just pin it in place in the same position. And obviously, this, you know, these bags are customisable to you. If you need a bigger bag, then use a larger piece of fabric. If you need longer straps or shorter straps, it's entirely up to you. If you're in any doubt, just use some scrap sheeting to make a bag that you think will be the right size. And just before I go any further, I am just going to stay stitch those straps so I can take the pins out. Oh. what happens when you get your uh, pins caught underneath your sewing machine.
And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to cover this in a minute and I don't want to risk leaving any pins in and forgetting about them because there is nothing worse than suddenly stabbing yourself with a pin and uh, bleeding all over your fabric. So that essentially is your bag. Now all you need to do is neaten it up. So we make the lining in exactly the same way as we made the original bag. So bear with me. Feel free to fast forward through this if you've got no time. So long back seam, finger press the centre of that and then line up your back seam to the centre front. Ooh. Finger press those sides. Pop your hand in and manipulate it so that pressed side seam lines up with your bottom seam. Do you know what? It's not quite the same measurement. Let's do it like that. And then what you do is you realise that you've missed out a very important step on this, which is leaving a gap in the bottom lining of your bag. So, if you're wondering why I've got sellotape on my sewing machine, it's because my beautiful daughter dropped it off a table and um, broke the catch. But the machine's fine. Get your stitch unpicker. I knew that at some point I would make a mistake. And just open up about about 10 centimetres of your back seam, or your bottom seam. Because of course you're going to be sewing this right sides together and at some point you're going to need to um, turn it the right way around. So, some of you might wonder why we show you the mistakes. It's because we like to prove that we're human. And also we like to show you the pitfalls that can happen when you're not really concentrating on what you're doing. Right, that will do. That should be big enough. So, now you've got the hole in the bottom of your bag, so you can turn it the right way around. You take your right side out bag, and you pop it inside your wrong side out lining. Like this. And you line up that back seam, the two back seams like so, and pop a pin in there. And then give it a good shake and make sure that your straps are down and out of the way, because you don't want to get them caught up as you're sewing it. Just pop a couple more pins in just to keep it straight. like this and then also what I'm going to do to uh, make sure I don't get any pins trapped under the machine again is I'm actually going to remove the accessory tray most machines you are able to do this it's simply so that if you're doing hems on trousers or, or collars and uh, not co well cuffs and things like that you've got you can actually slide it over the base and then run all the way around the top. Okay. 
And then hopefully you've left yourself a big enough gap at the bottom to pull your bag through, like so. Your straps are all nice and neat. You can then take the seam that you unpicked or left open if you had any sense. Hold the raw edges in and then just top stitch that closed because it will be on the inside of your bag. No one will notice it. But you can guarantee if you don't close that top seam, you will lose your keys in the lining of your bag. And then you just pop that lining inside the bag like so. And then for neatness, what you would do is get rid of that odd end of cotton for a start. You would just press that seam and you could, like I've done on this bag here, you could just top stitch along the seam because that gives you a bit of extra strength on the straps as well. But you've seen enough straight line sewing. I say, great little way to make some handy reusable shopping bags that you will use time and time again. Saves on the plastic and um, they're just really very pretty. So I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. I will now try and fix my sewing machine and we will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.